actually put emergencies into air traffic control yet. Um, we will at some point, but it's just not something that we've done yet. Um, and then we can make it so that once, once you declare an emergency, uh, nobody is going to get in your way. And so this is just a version 9 airplane that you might recognize. Um, just a, a simple, this is not an object file. This is not done in HC3D. This is just your, your typical uh, default airplane that you can make in Plane Maker in just a few hours um, without having to know uh, any 3D model at all, really. All you have to do is paint a little texture in Photoshop and put it on the model that's built for you by Plane Maker when you enter the aircraft geometry. And then you can see, uh, you see they got their little knob <laughs> on there. They look like they're kind of smooching. But on, um, okay, and then we go to weather. <coughs> Generate, turbulence, <coughs> storms. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And so now you can really see uh, the way the wings are interacting with the air. And this, this flex is not a, a fake cartoon flex that was just kind of drawn because it looked convincing. Each element of the air is interacting. Uh, you know, each element of the wing is interacting with the air. And then, of course, we can go ahead and um, go to uh, show flight model. And now you can really see how uh, each bit of the wing is interacting with the air and then how it affects. And, um, and then you can see the way the velocity vectors are moving over, moving over time. And then an interesting thing might be to go view, uh, view still spot. And you might be able to tell how he's actually working his way through the air. Um, it's a little hard to tell. Let's try the streamline. View. Uh, again. Now we're going to try. Uh, Showing streamlines. Oops. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's not going to help us out much, is it? All right, let's see if we can pop out the top. Actually, we might not be able to. Oh, great, now. Oh, boy, it's getting better. All right. Um, all right, I'm going to lower the nose so we can come out the bottom here. So I can continue the demo. Uh, Whoa! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And so, as you see, these clouds are really uh, three dimensional. Um, and uh, let's now go for view, uh, do, 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 still spot. And you just might be able to tell the way it's moving through a continuously variable uh, flow field. It's a little hard to see, but if you, if you look carefully enough, you can see how the streamlines are, are changing as he moves through the moving air. Okay, let's uh, turn that off. And uh, let's see, shift four. I'm trying to use a German keyboard in the dark. Um, <laughs> not the easiest thing. Okay, so anyway, so now we have wing flex, and uh, and then if you build up a little bit of speed, you kind of kind of start to see move a little bit, and then uh, we we haven't finished our um, we haven't done internal geometry for this airplane yet. But if we want to go to uh, 3D cockpit mouse look and kind of look back there and kind of get a sense. The slats probably shouldn't be coming out like that when we're going this fast. Or probably shouldn't be speed limit on the slats. They're, they're coming out as an angle of attack gets, gets tight. But there's a negative G scenario and then a positive G. Woo! Okay. And then you really get a sense of how 3D the clouds are. Oh, and then you can really see the little virtual world we created down there as well. Uh, as you see the roads and the terrain and as you come up with the 3D clouds. That's kind of a nice little shot of a lot of stuff going on at once. Um, yeah, this is actually kind of like being in an airplane. We are flying in uh, this kind of martial weather. Um, sorry, now we're in the clouds. Okay, so let's uh, let's go to. I want to pop out. Whoa! <laughs> Five more minutes. Five more minutes. Okay, let's go ahead and look at that. <clears throat> Woo! <laughs> okay. Um, let's go to select global airport. R-K-S-E-A, put ourselves on the ramp here, 
And, uh, and then we'll see if the guys manage to get unjammed and uh, do maybe some uh, take off some landings using artificial intelligence while I take the last couple of questions. Um, all right, hopefully, hopefully this, will, this will load us up at that airport in a few moments. Hopefully, if you don't run out of memory. Okay, uh, another question from anyone at all. Sure. The wing flex. Mm -hmm. um, will it also be uh, on all the planes? It will be on every airplane that is not generated as a custom object. In other words, if Plane Maker is allowed to generate the aircraft, it will have wing flex. If you make a custom <coughs> object for the aircraft, it will not automatically have wing flex. You will have to build it in using the wing flex data reps. So you have data reps that you can easily <coughs> use to deflect each bit of the object a certain amount based on wing flex. So we make it, the default airplanes have it, and we make it as easy as we can for you to add it to your models as well. Yeah. Okay? <coughs> sure. In your plausible world, how do the waterfalls look like? The waterfalls? Yeah. I don't know, ask me later on tonight. I'll maybe I'll have a chance to find one. Um, they spent a lot of work making sure that the rivers don't crawl up the canyon walls. <laughs> like when we go to the Grand Canyon, yeah, we don't want the rivers to be you know, offset to the side, just a little bit running along the side of the, the canyon walls. And they spent a lot of work uh, doing basically two things. One is finding good databases, okay? Finding good hydrology databases that don't conflict with the elevation databases. And then finally using the artificial intelligence to make sure the water always sits at the bottom. The artists tell me that they've got it solved. I'm not going to know that for certain until I've done a little bit of Grand Canyon flying. And I only have Seattle scenery here, not Grand Canyon scenery. Okay? What? Sure. Uh, if you're flying through a city, do you mm -hmm. see the skyscrapers? Uh, yes, you will see skyscrapers in the city, but they're only going to be kind of generic skyscrapers. Not exactly the real ones you'd see for real, but um, there are going to be skyscrapers, but perhaps of yeah, limited. Cool, thanks. Okay, no problem. Perhaps of uh, limited variety at first. But over time, we're going to have internet add-ons or internet updates to this to this product, uh, and we'll add more and more complex complex and complete buildings over time. Okay. Uh, yes. What about the integration of OpenStreetMaps? Yeah, OpenStreetMaps is what we use. Uh, this is already an OpenStreetMap sim, and we are actually going to set the scenery up even to take for net updates <laughs> sometime in the coming year. And so, as OpenStreetMaps are improved by users. Our road database is going to improve even in X plane. Okay. All right. Well, I think we probably run this thing down into the ground. So um, yes. Is there a way for the aircraft system to know if there is wind somewhere else except where the plane is at that time? If there's oh. wind. Uh, rain. Oh, rain. Uh, the air traffic control system does not look at weather right now. But remember, the weather is globally persistent. If there are clouds drawn off in another area of the country, then the rain will be there when you fly that area of the country. And you saw with the clouds just now as we were flying that um, you could see the clouds on the ways away and you could fly into them and fly out of them. So that rain, if it exists in a certain area, you'll be able to fly right up into the cloud, through it, and out the other end, just like you would in a real airplane. And right now, ATC is not worrying about the weather, but at some point, they'll, they'll either guide you around it or you'll be able to request vectors to get around it on your own. So, but in principle, a uh, functional weather radar is possible. A functional weather? Weather radar. Oh, uh, oh yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Any other questions, or are we about out of time? What, what do we got? Will, will you change the UI? The UI? <laughs> I, I like it the way it is. Uh, I seem to be the only person in, uh, on the planet that likes it, but um, the UI is bound to be modified at some point because nobody likes it except me. Um, <laughs> but at least initially, we're going to ship with the UI we got now because we know it works. Um, what doesn't work, and the reason we're seeing crashes is because we're just going outside the memory this machine has. And so we're going to be working on making sure we don't get any more memory-related crashes, where rather than crashing, it just doesn't add that much detail um, to whatever your next operation is going to be. Um, and if we're going to hit Christmas, we don't have time to be changing the UI also. So UI is going to get uh, tweaked at some point, but um, right now it's, it, it's going to be where it is for 10.0. Okay? Uh, how is the real weather system? 
same as version 9 in that it downloads a METAR RWX file from University of Purdue and uses that file to report the weather. The difference is because the weather doesn't repeat, and you saw how I was showing storms in some areas but not in others, that does connect to the real weather system. Um, so that in real weather, you will see fronts across one area of the country, clear in another, and when you fly through it, there will be continuous variation as you enter the clouds. No instant discontinuous changes. Everything is smoothly interpolated. So I have loaded up X-Plane with real weather um, while storms are moving across New York, and sure enough, you can see the pattern, kind of barely, but you can see it in a weather screen in X-Plane. So there, this, this weather system does to avoid crashes like we're still seeing here in this early in the beta process. Um, then new features, we'll, we'll start to talk about those in 10.2, maybe 10.3. 10.2 may, may be artistic refinement, as we find ways to make better buildings, better roads, better fields. Uh, so maybe 10.1 will be bug fixes and optimizations. 1.2 will be refinements of what we've got to make the best use of the technology we have. Maybe 10.3 will start getting into new features. But I always want to make sure that we get it bug free and optimized before we just start adding yet more stuff. There's enough stuff in here already. Okay? Sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, if you have failures on the plane. Oh, what? Failures? Oh, tons of failures. Oh, yeah. Hundreds and hundreds of failures. Yeah. Um, Matthias, you want to reboot this thing one more time? Just. So I'm sorry you have to keep rebooting. I don't, I don't like this. What can I say? First day of beta, it happens. But um, I can show you some failures. Um, if, if we get a restart, I'll show you some of the different ones. But there's hundreds of failures, engine failures, electrical failures, hydraulic failures, instrument failures, all sorts of failures. Yeah. How, how is the, uh, the, the cockpit modeling the default 770 looking like over time and all that stuff? Well, it's all there. Yeah, they work. It, it, it is, it, it, all the buttons are there and they do work. Yep. Answer is yes. All right. Anything else? Yes. Could you name a bunch of stock airplanes for X Plane 10? Yeah, sure. It's the same ones as X Plane 9, plus the uh, Boeing 747, <coughs> and um, the Beach Baron, and uh, updated uh, 747 for NASA to carry the space shuttle, updated space shuttle, updated X 15. Um, so, again, okay, well, an F 22, I think we're getting better here. He's, yeah, yeah, there we go. He's doing some of those airplanes, F 14 here. Um, F-22. So yeah, a good, a good handful of planes are going to be updated. So all the ones you're used to, many of them updated, plus a few more new ones besides. And at, at xplane.org and various other websites, you can get more and more. We're not running out of airplanes, that's for darn sure. Yeah. The immunization of the frame rate is mm -hmm. not always related to the user. Mm -hmm. Why isn't there an automated tool that creates or calculates on your system? What the best settings will be? Yeah. The only way I can imagine really optimizing the settings to find the best setting would be if the simulator ran for a very long time, making very small changes to see the impact of each change. And even so, uh, once it's done, it wouldn't know whether you're willing to give up some trees to get more buildings or give up some cloud puffs to get more airplanes. If the computer doesn't know what the trade-offs are that you're willing to make. So the rendering options screen remains <coughs> Uh, a little bit of a tricky setting in X-Plane because you can fiddle with it for hours, um, but I have a hard time automating something where I don't know what you're looking for. I mean, there's going to be days where I couldn't care less on the other airplanes there are, but I want all the cloud puffs in the world. Other days, I've got clear skies. I don't care about the number of cloud puffs. I want every possible building because I'm going to be doing some helicopter <coughs> operations. So I can't really, I don't see how I can automate that process to be the best you know, setting for the type of flying that you're going to do. So, um, yeah, uh, well, Larry Page, the founder of Google, he's, he's personally complained to me about the rendering settings in X-Plane. He's like, that page is non-trivial. And I was like, sorry. So it's, uh, it's, it's well known that the rendering options are tricky. I'm not sure what to do about that, though. All right, sure. Are there any fighters? Yeah, F-22, F-4, uh, Vigan, same like you got out there. Um, yeah. Handful of fighters. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, it's a little bit of a shame we don't have any World War II fighters, but I, we've got to get one in. Uh, somebody did an amazing hurricane, Nils Danielson, I think it is, did an amazing uh, hurricane World War II fighter, and he agreed to let me put it in X-Plane 10. So uh, we'll, have, we'll have a World War II fighter in there as well, at least one. Okay, yes? Yeah. How's the Phantom been reworked? Yes, <laughs> now for a Phantom reworked by Tom Tyler. 
and uh, it looks really good. The afterburners use the dynamic lighting to light up the tails, right? And um, so it, it's great. 3D cockpit, I think, at least. Yeah, on the front. On the front, okay. 